Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold <clears throat> Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. Mm. In today's call, we're going to discuss seven environments that need to change. Change, well, that's a word frequently discussed but rarely acted on, <laughs> especially by politicians. Real change, lasting change, is a change of heart followed by a decisive action to do things differently. The word change is in the King James Bible a total of 23 times, while it appears in the Amplified Bible 46 times. So let's look at some key scriptures. Matthew 3, 2, 3, 2, King James. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thank you, Jesus. As we've told before, the Greek word for repent is G3340. G3340, that means to change one's mind. To repent. This is the, well, it's further clarified in Matthew 3 2, this time in the Amplified Bible, mm -hmm. which says, and saying, repent, think differently, change your mind, regretting your sins and changing your conduct, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. To repent is to think differently, to change your mind, regretting your, regretting your sins and changing your conduct. When we repent of our sins, we change, well, we change our way of thinking, acting, and living. Acts 2.38, 238, Classic Amplified. And Peter answered them, Repent, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves. See, repentance is more than a thought, a confession. Scripture reveals it to be an action an agent for change. And because the Holy Spirit comes in and gives us, that's his, our agent for change. That's it. <clears throat> Matthew 3, 8, Classic Amplified. Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. There you go. The evidence our change from sinner to saint must be proven by the fruit of our actions. Same principles are true in habits that we wish to change. It's great to say we're going to change, but there must be a corresponding action to make the desired and necessary changes. Mahatma Gandhi once said, must be the change they wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've often heard people say they want to change their financial environment, but we can tell you with absolute confidence that nothing's going to change until they change. According to dictionary.com, the word environment is defined as the aggregate or the total of surrounding things, conditions or influences, surroundings, the social and cultural forces that shape the life of a person or a population. I want to read, we want to read the last part of that definition for environment one more time. That's very good. The social and cultural forces yes. that shape the life of of a person or a population. Mm. We are uniquely positioned to change our area, our environments. That's right. In seven major areas. Mm -mm. Number one, your learning environment. How you study the word, how you read a book or listen to an MP3 or listen to what is teaching you. First, you get, if you're reading, you get a pen or a pencil and, or a yellow highlighter or something. And as you read and you learn and you're listening, you'll find that nearly every page will have notes, you know, comments and ideas for practical implication into your life if you truly want to change. Second, you pray. Mm, nothing changes unless we're praying. That's can't, right. A prayer can't be answered unless it is prayed. So we need to ask God for help to understand and activate the scriptural principles that we're reading. The Holy Spirit will help us to have that fruit come up, you know, because of the time that we've spent and invested in the Word of God so that we can remain in the Word and be active, producing a harvest for years to come and leaving a legacy in, as well. Third, read without distraction, and you know exactly what that means. No TV, no phone, etc. Fourth, don't delay in reflecting, recording, and recalling the things that you've read or heard. You know, they say it's a scientific fact that you'll forget 50% of what you heard. Like, say, you're hearing a sermon or you're listening to something on the, you know, the 
radio on the way. We listen to serious radio preaching, you know, three hours after reading it or hearing it. And 24 hours, it says you have forgotten 50% of even that information. But, but the thing that they don't tell you is that the Holy Spirit is, you know, when we listen, the Holy Spirit can bring to our remembrance those things that we need to know at the time we need to know them. So if we really want to change, <clears throat> we need to be capturing the insight and the revelation of the word and asking the Lord to bring it for you know, as a reality into our lives. Number two, you're a living environment, a place where you change. One of our favorite places on planet Earth isn't in any of the 14 countries that we visited. That we've been captivated by the mountains surrounding Lucerne, Switzerland, the history of England, England, the antiquity of Egypt, the inspiration of walking where Jesus walked in Israel, so many other places. My personal favorite place on planet Earth is my home, my living environment. It's changed over the years. All of our younger children are on their own now. So it's just me and my really fine wife, Beth. Our home is our place of refuge and enlightenment, place of comfort where we build our strength, spend time in the Word with each other. Though it's changed over the years with the coming of born of children, we've managed to create an environment for living, loving, and learning. There's the place where we read and write, the place where we pray, the place where we relax mentally and physically. No matter how big or small your apartment or home, create a room, corner of a secret place where you pray, a place where you change mentally and spiritually for what you read. Psalm 91.1, 91.1, classic amplified. You who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable, fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. What a scripture. Number three, your preparation environment. Where you get ready for work, et cetera, like your bathroom, your closet, et cetera. Have you ever noticed how you feel when you can walk into an environment where everything is neat and accurately arranged? You know, the order of an environment actually creates a, a freshness. It, it enhances a desire to, well, be your best and to be more and do more than you've done. An orderly environment becomes an invitation to a fresh start. So you can start your challenge by removing the clutter from your lives, including or you know, but not limited to your dresser, your closet, your nightstand, your bathroom reading rack, whatever. And the garage, the attic as well. We're getting really personal there though, smiling. Anyway, ask God how to bring order into your environment and it just makes you feel better when you know that everything is in place and in order and he'll help you. Yes, he will. Psalm 32, eight, th 32 eight in the English Standard Version says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Another one of my favorite scriptures, and I have a lot of favorite scriptures. <laughs> That's a good one, though. Number four, your transportation environment. What you ride in from home to work. Start with your car. The interior and exterior of your car reflect the order in your life. If there's stuff in the floorboard, floorboard sends a message, and not the one you necessarily want. Clean it up, keep it tidy every day. If the exterior of your car is dirty, wash it. The appearance of your car has a reflection on you, whether you realize it or not. 1 Timothy 4.15, 4, 4.15 in New Living Translation. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Mm -mm. Number five, your workplace environment, what I struggle with, where you spend <clears throat> probably at least eight hours of every day, very possibly. First Corinthians 14.40 tells you this. First Corinthians 14.40 says, let all things be done decently and in order. According to Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for order comes from a root word, G5021, G5021, it says to place in a certain order, to arrange, to assign a place, to appoint. 
Is your office desk workstation and files a reflection of whether or not your professional life is in order? <laughs> I hope not sometimes. <laughs> what does your supervisor or boss or for that many coworkers think when they observe your work environment? Make no mistake about it. The order or lack of it uh, on your work environment is no doubt a reflection on you. Hebrews 13.21, Hebrews 13.20 in the classic Amplified says, strengthen, complete, and perfect, and make what make you what you ought to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight. Really, our Heavenly Father is a God of order. Number six. Your nourishment environment, where you eat. Mealtime should be a time when memories are made and remembered. When you're with your family, be with your family. Yes, you won't regret it. No phone calls, no text messages during mealtimes. As a parent or grandparent, if you create value for mealtime, it will be honored by your children and grandchildren. As we were meditating on this nourishment environment, we were led to Revelation 3.20. 320 Classic Amplified. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. One hears and listens to it, he's my voice and opens the door. I will come in to him, will eat with him, and he will eat with me. The eating area, including the kitchen sick, must always be ready to entertain special guests, even angels unaware. Hmm. Number seven, your spiritual environment, where God can bring the change needed into your life. <clears throat> Proverbs 12, 27, 12, 27. In the Message Bible says, a lazy life is an empty life, but early to rise gets the job done. When you bring order into your life, then you'll find extra satisfaction. As in Deuteronomy 12, 16, <clears throat> excuse me, Deuteronomy 12, 16 in the Message Bible you are to celebrate in the presence of God, your God, all the things you've been able to accomplish. You know, a proper spiritual environment positions us strategically to bring the change that we desire into our lives. Absolutely, it does. <clears throat> these are seven fundamentals. Yeah. But if you get these environments in order, you're going to find that you accomplish things you never thought possible. That's it. And you're going to you know things by your learning that mm. you never thought possible. A lot of clutter around your life brings clutter into your Come mindset. It's and the truth. it doesn't allow you or help you to be able to, well, get things done. This is fundamental teaching. It is fundamental. Take it to life. Well, until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts from the Word of God. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.